Hi everyone, welcome to episode 4. In case you missed it last week, we shared some pretty big news. We are pregnant. So without further ado, we're going to continue bringing you our week by week pregnancy updates and information along with our in real life experiences as we live it along the way. Uh, so this week we're going to be talking all about things that you can do to try to help your pregnancy be as healthy as possible and some lifestyle changes you should consider after that positive pregnancy test. So if this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah and I'm an OBGYN. I'm Kurt and I'm a pediatrician. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. So as we mentioned, this is week four in our 40-week pregnancy journey, and this episode is all about things you can do to help have a healthy pregnancy and some day-to-day -day changes you can make in your lifestyle to help your developing baby be as healthy as possible. So first, let's talk about some of the early signs and symptoms of pregnancy. Some women aren't going to start to notice this until one to two weeks after their missed period, but some women are really sensitive and start to notice them right away. Some of the earliest common symptoms are breast tenderness, fatigue, nausea, frequent urination, moodiness, and maybe some bloating. And that's all from those increasing hormones your body's starting to make. One of the most frequent is that breast tenderness that usually tends to resolve as your body gets used to those hormones. And the other one that really sometimes surprises women is how extreme the first trimester fatigue can be. And so make sure you're really listening to your body during this time. Mm -hmm. Go to bed earlier, take a nap. Most of the time that energy really starts to rebound around the second trimester, so hang in there. Another symptom you've probably heard about is nausea. Uh, and nausea in the first trimester usually comes between weeks four and week nine, with actually 70 to 80% of women experiencing some degree of morning sickness yeah. during pregnancy. That's a lot. Yep. So a lot. Um, because it's so common and sometimes so debilitating, we're going to make sure to spend more time dedicated to this topic in a future episode. Definitely. Yep. But since we've talked about nausea, it's really important that we talk about diet. So one diet and pregnancy myth that we need to debunk is that as a mom, now you are eating for two. Unfortunately, that mindset can get you into trouble with excess weight gain, and in all actuality, a normal weight woman only needs 300 to 400 extra calories per day during pregnancy, and that increase isn't needed until the second trimester. You're definitely going to gain weight during pregnancy, and a normal weight woman, the recommendation is that, that you gain 25 to 35 pounds during the whole pregnancy. That usually starts to be about almost a half a pound to a pound per week during the second trimester. And it is common that you do not have any weight gain in the first trimester. If you are an underweight woman and your BMI is 18.5 or less, it is recommended that you gain between 28 and 40 pounds during pregnancy. If you are overweight, so your BMI is 25 to 29.9, it's recommended that you gain 15 to 25 pounds during pregnancy. And if you are obese with a BMI over 30, the recommended weight gain is 11 to 20 pounds. So where does all that weight actually come from? In a normal healthy pregnancy over the course of the 40 weeks, about seven and a half pounds comes from baby, about two pounds comes from amniotic fluid. There's about one and a half pounds coming from the placenta, two pounds from increased uterus size, two pounds from increased breast tissue. There's about four pounds that comes from increased bodily fluids and four pounds from increased blood volume. Only about seven pounds comes from increased stores in mom of fat, nutrients, and protein. Regardless of weight, however, um, there's some other nutrients that you want to make sure you're getting in your diet. These are things like folic acid, iron, calcium, and vitamin D. Um, if you started taking a prenatal vitamin, it's great to continue with that. That's the easiest way to make sure you're getting these extra nutrients you need. If you aren't taking one already, it's a great time to start in addition to a well-round, balanced diet. So you're pregnant and you're looking for more information. Where are you going to go other than this YouTube channel? Uh, there's a couple of books that we actually have ourselves. Uh, there's the classic 
what to expect when you're expecting. Um, maybe your mom read it. I know my mom read it during pregnancy. Um, there's also this amazing book from uh, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists. Um, just a great month by month guide to pregnancy as well. Um, ask at your OBGYN. They may actually have free copies that they give away to patients. Um, really outstanding information stuff that we're going to ourselves for information in our pregnancy. Um, and then um, the 2002 sorry, 2020 release, uh, The Motherly's Guide to Becoming Mama. Um, this is a contemporary uh, book redefining the journey through pregnancy and postpartum. Um, we love it. There's a lot of great information in this book. And actually, Sarah was the medical advisor and editor for this book. Um, so we're a little bit biased. We know it's filled with a lot of great information cover to cover. So in terms of diet, there are a couple foods you want to be aware of that could potentially put your baby at risk. So the foods you want to try to avoid in pregnancy are um, seafood that's high in mercury. So these are like big fish that eat other fish. Think like swordfish, mackerel, king marlin, um, tilefish, shark. You want to avoid any raw or undercooked seafood, meat, and eggs. Sorry, sushi lovers. You want to avoid soft cheeses. Like brie, gorgonzola, feta. You want to avoid unpasteurized dairy and fruit juice and deli meats too, unless you're gonna cook them to steaming. Exactly, and the other thing you wanna make sure you're doing is watching all of your fruits and vegetables really well. Keep in mind all of these are fairly new recommendations in the last 50 years, and so there are women across the world who have eaten these foods in pregnancy and had healthy pregnancies. Um, there is just very small but potential risk that you should be aware of and decide what you are comfortable with in your pregnancy. Overall, the goal is to have a healthy and well-balanced diet, rich in things like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and lean protein sources. Uh, if you're able to, it's a good idea to vary your protein sources as well, so you can think about consuming things like low mercury containing seafood. This is like shrimp, salmon, tilapia. Um, it's also okay to have caffeine in pregnancy as long as it's in moderation. So think about 200 milligrams a day, that's about one cup of coffee. So if you need that to get your day started or after your lunch break, go ahead and have the coffee. Guilt free, for sure. Um, one of the next things we're gonna to transition to talking about is exercise in pregnancy. Yeah, so this is one of our favorite topics and something that is incredibly important because it can do so many good things for both mom and baby. Uh, the goal here is about 30 minutes of ex exercise three to five times a week. Um, you know, if you're already active, you can stay active. If you aren't active, it's a great time to get active. Big thing is just to do pregnancy safe activity. Um, if you have questions about that, you can definitely talk to your provider. Some things that are generally safe are safer, like hiking, um, gentle bike riding, swimming, aerobics, Zumba, strength training all totally fine. Just make sure that you are able to carry on a conversation while you're doing your exercise. So week four of pregnancy and so far feeling fine. None of those early signs or symptoms of pregnancy yet. Knock on wood. I, they certainly could be coming. I did have to give up my nightly glass of wine, but I would say that being pregnant has definitely motivated us to eat really healthy and nutritious things and has also motivated us to get our butts working out again and exercising, so that's been really nice. Mm -hmm. Another quick list we wanna share with you are some of the non-food things that you should avoid in pregnancy. The number one thing on that list is smoking. It's a great idea to quit smoking before you get pregnant, but if you are pregnant and find that you are still smoking, now is a great time to stop. Smoking has been linked to vaginal bleeding, preterm birth, small for gestational age infants, as well as stillbirth and sudden infant death syndrome. Smoke, quitting smoking is the number one thing you could do for your health and your baby's health. Another really important thing to avoid is alcohol. Unfortunately, there's no known safe amount of alcohol consumption in pregnancy, uh, and we know that alcohol is related to fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, which has related uh, deficits in development, learning, and behavioral issues later in life. Finally, you want to avoid things like cocaine, methamphetamines, marijuana, and other illegal substances, as these have been linked to birth defects, learning issues, and other a spectrum of other things in kiddos down the road. Absolutely, and if you're having struggles quitting any of these things, uh, you can call 1-800-662-HELP, um, or for specific help in quitting smoking, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 
Some other things that maybe aren't on your list of things to avoid could be things like cleaning your cat litter box. Unfortunately, cat feces carry a bacteria called toxoplasmosis that can have some pretty serious uh, effects on a developing baby. Uh, you may have also heard that you need to avoid things like hot tubs, hot baths, and saunas, uh, but actually we know that as long as you limit your exposure to 10 minutes, these things are all probably safe for a baby. One last thing to think about is medications. You're going to want to talk to your OB provider about any prescription medications that you're taking to ensure that they're safe to keep taking during pregnancy. But what about the over-the-counter stuff? You are likely to experience some aches and pains or headache during your pregnancy. Tylenol or acetaminophen is going to be your go-to pain reliever and you can use it as directed on the bottle. NSAIDs or things like ibuprofen, Motrin, or Advil are not good for babies developing kidneys, so you want to avoid those during pregnancy. And then finally, we've talked about progesterone, that hormone that's starting to increase in your body, and it tends to slow everything down in your system. So I want you to be prepared for some heartburn or constipation. For heartburn, you can use Maalox or Tums. You want to avoid Pepto-Bismol. And for your constipation, have your favorite stool softener on hand, like Colace, Miralax, or Metamucil. You also might get a cough during pregnancy and Robitussin is going to be okay. If you have any other questions about meds that are safe in pregnancy, talk with your OB provider. So despite all of these lists of things to avoid, pregnancy is overall a state of wellness and you can kind of live your life with a few modifications and things to keep in mind to avoid as many risks as possible for your pregnancy. So with that, that's a wrap for us this week. Come back next week for week five updates on what's going on with mom, uh, baby, and some great educational information for you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Um, come check us out over on our Instagram at the Doctors Bjorkman. And if you like what you're seeing, click subscribe and follow along on this journey with us. See you next week. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.